In this video, two recent key developments will be discussed which are leading in today's discourse on finding metropolitan solutions regarding urban services and transport. First of all, it concerns the concept of urban metabolism, as shown here to the left, in a schematic partial section over a piece of urban tissue. Second, the concept of ecosystem services, as indicated in the figure to the right, showing its four main categories. The concept of urban metabolism looks at a human settlement according to the analogy of animal and plant cells. The animal cell has a so-called consume value based on the process of homeostasis and growth with use of stored energy, oxygen and water and production of carbon dioxide and refuse. While the plant cells to some extent turn this around. In this way, they have a create value, where they create oxygen and store energy based on the same kind of processes, taking carbon dioxide, sunlight and water as input. Metabolism is a precondition for life, along with six other essential aspects of living or so-called regenerative systems. These other aspects are homeostasis, structural organization, growth, adaptation, response to stimuli, and reproduction. The complex notion of panarchy, which will not be explained in detail in this video, is also based on these aspects and the continuous cycle with the four stages of exploitation, conservation, release, and reorganization. And the joint notion of these preconditions for life and the concept of panarchy are an increasingly important starting point for many elaborations of urban resilience. Though metabolism was at first used to describe living organisms, pioneering ecologist Arthur Tansley expanded the term in 1935 already to encompass the material and energetic streams from the inorganic construction of settlements. And he introduced thus the urban metabolism. Urban metabolism focuses on the dynamics of cities beyond traditional mobility and relationships between built and uncultivated environments. In relation to scarcity, carrying capacity and conservation of mass and energy. It is used as a framework for modeling complex urban systems, material and energy streams as if the city were an ecosystem. It has strong relations to other concepts that build upon mimicking nature, like Biomimicry by Janine Benius and Cradle to Cradle by William McDonough and Michael Braungart. Several complex elaborations have even tried to realize full closure of essential systems building upon the concepts of urban metabolism and industrial ecology. Like here shown, for instance, the concept of Zonneterp, a project in the Netherlands. Urban metabolism, however, is not without its critics. It has been challenged by certain social scientists because it neglects the sociological fact that humans are malleable and conditioned by their social environment, not by the natural environment. For this perspective, planning cities as a metaphor for a large biological entity is naive because human relationships with the environment and other humans are more complicated. Though sociological studies of urban metabolism have shown some irrationality of societies in regard to essential streams, there is one thankfully positive observation. Human settlements are able to adapt to environmental conditions and humans are self-aware of their actions and thus capable to adjust behaviors. So it is important to include further benefits and feedback loops to us humans and to positively influence our behavior. This is why recent extended urban metabolism approaches include the notion of synergism, to use the benefits of the intrinsic relationships 
existing within the urban metabolic system. And this directly connects to the second key development, which is leading in today's discourse on finding metropolitan solutions regarding urban services and transport the so-called concept of ecosystems services. Humankind benefits in a multitude of ways of ecosystems. Ecosystem services are defined as the direct and indirect contributions of ecosystems, structures and functions in combination with other inputs to human well-being. The ecosystem services concept itself was popularized by the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, where it was grouped into four categories. The first, provisioning, then regulating, next, supporting, and finally, cultural values. Provisioning includes, for instance, the production of food and water, while regulating includes, for instance, the control of climate and disease. Supporting refers to support of nutrient cycles and crop pollination, while cultural values, for instance, include spiritual and recreational benefits. To help inform decision makers, many ecosystem services are being assigned economic values as well. In the end, ecosystem services is all about trying to include synergism between different functions and, above all, to do so in an inclusive way with people, users, and to do so in a balanced way between soft and hard infrastructure, nature and technology. In doing so, it becomes a motive to new coalitions of infrastructures and stakeholders, and also a motive to new forms of infrastructure layout and multiple use of space with multiple benefits. And finally, as a motive to new forms of urban transformation, building site preparation and maintenance. Finally, both for the concept of urban metabolism and ecosystem services can be applied in different urban morphologies and with different densities, as shown in the three examples below. From left to right, Shengdao, China, Mazdar City, in the United Arab Emirates, and to the right, Kulemborg-Langsmeer in the Netherlands.